What's up YouTubers, DRAM76 here today again. Today I'm going to bring to you a little bit different story. It's still about gaming, but today is going to be about one of Nintendo's worst idea flops, whatever you want to call it, but it was one of their worst creations they have ever made to this date. Not to say it's the only one, but it is one of the biggest ones. I want to talk to you about the Virtual Boy. And everybody knows synonymous with hearing the name Virtual Boy that it was crap. It only lasted one year and then it was discontinued. Virtual Boy manufacturer of course was Nintendo. Uh, it came out around July 1995. The generation was a fifth generation system. That was the fifth console or what if you want to call it portable, whatever you want to call it. It was the fifth one Nintendo had created. Um, it was had a NEC V810 processor. The code name was the VR32 or the Virtual Neptune Experience. Nintendo shipped out 770,000 of these units of these systems. And uh, let's see, what it priced. Let's see, let me check my notes. It priced it brand new, 179.95 or 15,000 yen. Uh, the, just to tell you how bad it was, <laughs> the best-selling game that this system had was Mario Tennis. Mm, that's saying something, because, I mean, it takes a special person that really loves sports games to really make a tennis game the best-selling game that a system has. Um, its, pro its predecessor, of course, it came out after the Nintendo, uh, I mean, excuse me, the Super Nintendo and the Super Nintendo was released in 1990. Then you had the Virtual Boy in 95, and then its successor was the N64 in 1996, or the Ultra 64, however you want to call it. The original name of it was the Ultra 64, and then it be once it was shipped to the U.S., it became the N64. All right. The, one of the problems with it, the battery pack. It took six AA batteries. The longest lifespan it had was... Uh, four hours and the other issue it had Nintendo even put a warning on this box uh, for parent urging parents if your children are seven and under please do not let them play it that the system could cause severe eye damage in young kids now I mean that right there should have said something about the game if you've got to put a warning on there said hey please do not play us if you're a certain age or it could damage you that something should have been really thought out a little more before they did this but it was part of Nintendo's problem though because they pushed and wanted a fast release date due to the fact that the N64 was coming out. They wanted the Virtual Boy out before that. And it caused such problems. The creators of the Virtual Boy wanted to wait because at the time the red and black LEDs were the cheapest thing they could get to run it. That's why it's in red and black. Well, if they could have waited one more year, they could have got colored LEDs for a lot cheaper price and then it would have been colored um, screens instead of the red and black. Another issue it had was it was to be called a portable gaming system but it was too heavy to be a portable gamer. It did not have a strap for the head at the time. You couldn't just hold it and wear it like a pair of goggles. It just couldn't be done. So it came with this tabletop stand which caused you to get a terrible crick, uh, muscle soreness, uh, neck aches, whatever you want to call it, it was just very uncomfortable to play. You always had to have your neck arched at a certain degree angle to play the thing. Uh, another problem was the control pack. It was one of the first controllers, well, and to this date, it's the only controller to have two D-pads, on each, one on each side of the controller. But the problem was, if you did not use batteries, the power supply that plugged into the controller popped into the back of it. So if you're playing on a table and you move the wrong way and bump it, you're going to kick that power supply out of your controller and whatever you're playing, you've just lost. What else was it? Uh, two D-pads. Uh, the controller was in the shape of an M. They did that, of course, for Mario. And again, um, it, came, it had multiple games. Not a very big selection. Uh, what what they had for the system which was another problem the game was so the system itself was so rushed that there was just no way possible that uh, 
Nintendo could have got out the games that they wanted to support the console. And again, the other issue was the fact that they forced it so soon that they just did not have the backup for it. The games, they didn't have the system itself was not ready for the release. Like I said, the intentional thing for the system was to be fully colored. But because, like I said, the red and black was cheaper LEDs for it, they went with that to push the system out. I believe if they would have slimlined the design, made the head strap, and then actually had like a set of head earphones that came around for the headset, it would have been a whole lot better if it was actually a portable gaming device like it was to be sold as. But there was no way that this could be sold for that. And then, like I said, the graphics were were just were not true 3D. I mean, you had Mario, the best game was, like I said, Mario Tennis, where they hit the ball, and the object of it was that the ball was supposed to look like it came back towards you in your face. And then Nintendo also uh, popped in an option you could do to where the game would automatically turn itself off in 15 minutes after playing just to give your eyes a rest. But if you're like me, who would want to be in the middle of your game and have the system completely shut down? And then you also have to think, how many parents out there were really mad once you got that thing and every four hours you're hollering, I need batteries, I need batteries, I need batteries. I mean, that's like the original Game Boy. It sucked up battery life faster than anything you could have thought of. Address due date, battery life, etc. Other than that, I mean, at least one good thing I guess you can say, it's not like the E.T. Atari game. It's not sitting somewhere in the bottom of a landfill with a thousand or so games on top of it being buried just to hide from the public. But guys, I mean, again, this is just something that's my opinion. Some of you may like it, and that's your own opinion. I'm not going to hate you for it. I'm not going to be upset for you. It's your own opinion. But the stats don't lie, and Nintendo even says that this was the worst machine they ever made. I would love to see them revisit it, make it, streamline it, try to remake it nowadays with the technology that they had. It would be an awesome thing if they could do it right. But again... Like I said, it's just my opinion. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, subscribe, share, and favorites. And guys, I'll see you again on Tuesday where I'll be doing my top 10 video game heroes. And I hope you check out the channel. And thank you, and I hope you had a great weekend, guys.